Welcome to the Artist Academy podcast, a place where we focus on the business side of art to help you attract more customers, increase profits, and ultimately live a life of creativity and financial freedom. I am your host, Andrea Earhart, and this week's episode is all about our upcoming 31-day challenge, what it is, why you should care, how it can benefit you in so many ways for the upcoming year. Basically, I'm going to try to talk you into doing this because I've seen the magic that can happen with especially new artists who, if you're in your first couple years and you're not quite established yet, I mean, it works for all levels. I'm doing it this year, and I know several other established artists that are doing it, but especially those artists who are still trying to figure out your niche and still just trying to get up and going, trying to find that momentum of painting every day, this is for you, especially. So I'm going to talk you into doing it and just by sharing why and all of the things, but just to give you a little bit of a life update, I recently had a baby and I want to share a little bit about that with you because this is going to affect my upcoming 31 day challenge. So I currently have a one month old (laughs) newborn. Crazy. Babies are everything you've ever heard of. All the stereotypes are true (laughs) in some way. I am tired. I, I am probably the happiest I've been just cuddling my little baby boy and birth was a wild roller coaster like it is for everybody and so I'm just going to share a little bit about that if this is your first time listening to the Artist Academy podcast this might be a little bit too much information but I think so from the messages that I'm getting on Instagram and everybody everybody's interested in some way about how things are going and how art is going along with being a new mom and so I'm just going to share a little bit before we get into this episode so I gave birth at 40 weeks and three days a little over a month ago, and it was a little crazy. We went in and I was all hooked up to the monitors so they could see baby and contractions and all the things. And it was very quick that we realized that every time I had a contraction or a big one, his heart rate would drop. And going in super confident, seeing your baby's heart rate start to drop on the monitor every time I, my body was trying to prepare to push him out. It was a little unnerving. I was just, I remember looking over at my husband and being like, okay, this is kind of a lot. He's like, it's okay. We got this. But my doctors and the nurses were just amazing. And after several hours of this, after trying positions, I was hooked on oxygen. Like we tried all the things and it was about three in the morning at this time, a few hours had passed and they decided to call in the on-call doctor. So like literally waking up a doctor out of sleep and bringing him into the hospital. And I didn't realize what was going on at the time, but as soon as he got there, he was, we had a consultation. He was like, so we don't know if this is going to (laughs) work. Like, so since you're, I was only dilated to like a half a centimeter and they were like, look, if you were almost there, like we'd be like, yeah, let's go natural. But he's like, I've seen this before. This usually means that your body doesn't have the ability to give him what he needs right now and, or to support him. And so we think a C-section would be the best route. And so that's what we ended up doing. And super weird being just sliced open on a table in front of a lot of people and very unnerving, but it was very quick. The whole procedure took an hour and by six, seven in the morning, so we were only in the hospital for, I don't know, eight hours maybe. And yeah, he was born and he's perfectly healthy. Eight pounds, nine ounces, little bundle of joy. (laughs) And yeah, it was, it's been just crazy. The first couple days home from the hospital, oh my gosh, hormones are real. (laughs) Hormones mixed with lack of sleep and all that craziness. I would just like cry randomly. And my husband would look over and be like, you okay? I'm like, yeah, it's it's just my hormones. And I think I need to go take a nap. (laughs) But then after a few days, everything worked out. And now we're over a month in and I feel very normal and almost back to normal, (laughs) but a lot more confident. I'm starting to get used to his little cries and what they mean. And it's just so much fun. Really, I spend my day, I let him just like nap on me and then we just cuddle and it's just so much fun. (laughs) Like I'm really not even interested in getting back to work yet, but I'm going to do this challenge because 
I think it would be good for me to get my brain on art at least a couple hours throughout the day and just back to a little bit of normalcy. But really, I am completely content (laughs) just hanging out at the house with him. The days just fly by. All we do is sleep in increments of one to three hours maximum. So I'm really just taking naps lately. But I just cuddle a baby all day and feed him. And we just went for a walk today. And (laughs) it's just really great. So anyway, that's the update. And how I'm going to incorporate the 31-day challenge looks very different for me this year as it's looked in the past. So I'm going to share some of the ways I've done it in the past and how I plan to do it this year. But Now, what is the 31 day challenge exactly? You're like, okay, like, what am I listening to? And, you know, why should you care? Why should it benefit you? So, what is it? 31 day challenge. And these are the rules that I have completely made up that some people follow, some people break them, some people do it their own version, do whatever you want. But this is what I'm going to be doing and what I suggest to do. It's 31 paintings in 31 days, or 31 drawings, or 31 photography photos, or 31 sculptures or whatever you want to do. It doesn't have to be painting, but I'm going to be referring to it as paintings because that's what I do. And so just kind of change that around for whatever you need. 31 paintings in 31 days. Sounds like a lot, right? But you can make this as hard on yourself or as easy on yourself as you want to. Okay. The first year I did this, I did 31 animal paintings in 31 days. So it took about maybe anywhere from an hour and a half to three and a half hours per painting, usually around maybe two and a half. Every single night, because I would procrastinate, I was not a morning person, I would just carve time instead of watching Netflix or doing whatever, I would just sit down to my easel around seven o'clock at night. And so from seven to about 9 p.m., I would paint and I would paint a an animal and then I would record a time-lapse video as I was painting and post the time-lapse video. And so all of my followers on Instagram and Facebook and all the places could follow along. And what I started noticing was people would start suggesting what animals I should do next. They would be asking which one I was going to be doing that day. People would, they started talking. It made my art a topic of conversation and more memorable because they they were following right along with it with me. It gave my social media more attention. And really, that's the game we're all playing, right? How much attention can we get? How many people and how much art can we sell? Right? It's just, it's an attention game. And so it's, this is a way to get your audience's attention and keep it. You can become known for something through this repetition of creating something every day, whatever topic you choose. For example, the second year I did this, I thought about it a little bit more and I was like, okay, I am known as the butterfly girl here locally. (laughs) It's because I painted photo op butterfly wings and that's just what I became known for because I started creating them over and over again downtown at the zoo. Everybody wanted butterfly wings. Like, okay, so for my 31 day challenge, well, it seems only fitting that I should create 31 butterflies. So I decided to also not paint. I broke out some pastels and every night before bed, I would sit in bed and have my pastel pencils right next to me and a clean piece of paper and I would draw out a butterfly and it's how I figured out that I do not like pastel pencils. (laughs) I would much rather paint them, but it was worth a try. It was an experiment. And by the end of it, I had 31 butterflies that I ended up putting together on one sheet and I sold them as a collective and individually by the end of it. Plus, it was a really good way for me to travel because we ended up, I wasn't at home every single day, so I was able to take it with me. And it's not just a whole painting setup. I was just taking a sketch pad and pastels and creating a butterfly every single night. I just made it a little bit more accessible. So if you're in a bind where you're like, I am not going to be home the whole time. (laughs) Actually, the first year, not to digress, the first year when I did animals, I was also not home. We spent the New Year's in Vegas. So I got my happy butt up the next day after partying in Vegas (laughs) 
firm on December 31st. On January 1st, around 3 p.m., I started my first animal painting and... Yeah, I ended up taking a little paint set with me to Vegas. So that is commitment. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I wanted to get this thing started. But just an idea. And then the third year, I did these glitter rain paintings. And that was based on, my thought process was, I did one painting of a cloud with glitter coming out of it earlier that year, and it was my best-selling painting ever. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to recreate that painting over and over again with different colors, slightly different characteristics, and just kind of play with it, but a mini version every day for 31 days. And that's what I did. I did mini glitter rain, so mini clouds with glitter coming down. And I ended up selling every single one of those. And every day when I posted it, made it for sale on Instagram and people bought them for $100. So not a crazy profit, but again, they only took me an hour or two to create. Not very long at all. And people bought them mostly for their kids, <laughs> their daughters, and they're ripped to hang in their rooms. And I think from doing it every year, people looked forward to it and people would ask me, what are you doing this year for the 31 day challenge? And also having it at a, such a low price point and also combining it with my most successful painting idea that thus far that year, I found a, a sweet spot in there where I made it accessible and intriguing or I had an idea that people liked and I also priced it at an affordable level that made it attainable for a lot of people who maybe don't want to spend thousands of dollars on a mural or whatnot. And last year, I was feeling burnt out last year. I had just finished my biggest year yet. I had just written a book. I had <laughs> I had done so much this past January to where I was like, I I don't know what I could do for this. So I decided to do sketches instead of paintings. I thought that doing 31 sketches in 31 days I would help me, would help just jolt my brain back into creativity mode since the burnout was very real from just hustling all year. <laughs> and I ended up creating sketches and just ideas. I tried to get my mind working without actually putting in a ton of work. I spent about an hour on each sketch, just played around with fun, imaginative, surreal ideas because I think I've used this example before in the past, but if you go to paint something like a flamingo, right, and you paint it once and you paint it realistically and then you come back to it, uh, say, the next day and you're like, I'm going to try to do this differently. How can I do this differently? Like, well, let me paint two flamingos in the shape of a heart or something. And then you come back the next day and like, how can I do this differently? And you just expand your mind each time and say, okay, the third time I'm going to create a flamingo, but I'm going to make the body of it a pink rose and a head coming out of it, make it a little bit more surreal. And then the next day you create it with, say, I'm going to make a flamingo in the snow and <laughs> make it funny like that. Or, you know, you just, you expand on it every single day as your mind takes the time to really go there rather than just having a blanket idea the first day. So that's another way that you could use this challenge as a way to expand your creativity is just take an idea and then expand it over and over again by overthinking it. And one way I go to do this is I'll go on Pinterest and I'll look at what other people are doing and the weird things other people are creating. And I'll have, I'll take a couple ideas and combine them to make my own. And this is a good idea for everybody who thinks that their creativity brain is broken. I thought that at one point. I just, I was like, just give me something to paint. I'll paint your logo. And that way I don't have to actually think of a cool idea. I still think like that. But doing something like this can help stretch that creativity muscle because it is a muscle. I think we all get in our own heads. I do about trying thinking too literally, not remembering that creativity and artists are really weird and we can really go there with our ideas. <laughs> and so if you're a muralist or whoever and you have problems thinking up ideas, like getting inspiration, use this challenge as an inspiration kick in the butt and think of a bunch of ideas and jot them down. That way, when you go to paint them, 
during January, which is coming up in a few days. <laughs> and when you go to paint them, you have a whole list of ideas of things to paint because that's the key to this whole thing is preparing, right? Getting the canvases, getting the ideas. For the first year, I actually sketched out a bunch of different animals on canvases. I just did very small 12 inch by 12 inch canvases, sketched out a bunch of different animals. I think I did at least 20. So that way on the day when I was busy, because we're all going to be busy, right? We're all booked up. We're all, I'm going to be busy taking care of a newborn. You're going to be busy working with all the things that you have planned for the upcoming year. And But it takes time to carve away just an hour or two or three every single night to put towards your own creativity or your own art practice. Or say you're currently at another job and that job just sucks the creative life out of you and you come home and you're just dead. I promise making yourself go to the easel and start painting. Once you start painting, that's the hardest part is getting there, right? Like for me it is. And so as you keep going, pop in a podcast, pop in an audiobook, start painting and then you'll be so glad you did. Just like going to the gym. It's so hard to put on the shoes and get out the door. But once you're there, it's not too bad. <laughs> and same thing with art. And I mentioned this because... I have a lot of artists who come in the Artist Academy who come in and they have good intentions and they come in and they're like, they watch a couple of videos and they're like, oh, wait, I have to do work. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I'll do that next week. And then three months go by and they've watched a couple of videos in the first week and they haven't touched it and there's no effort there because their consistency muscle hasn't been worked out at least not recently. And there's nothing pushing them. Like there's no sales. There's no, there's no deadline. Like they're just starting their art career and they're just maybe seeing the light through the tunnel of like, maybe I could start a career like this, but there's so many things inside of your head, right? They're like, no, she did it because she started young. It's too late in life for me. Or she got lucky with this. And it's harder for me because I live in an area where art isn't a thing. Or I live in an area where there's too much competition. Like there's so many excuses that take the forefront and make it into where the effort isn't being put in. But a challenge like this, I think it helps to eliminate all those excuses by just saying the reason why I'm painting every day is I'm participating in this challenge. I've made a couple friends within the Artist Academy and they're now my accountability partners and they're expecting me to do it and I'm expecting them to show up and I'm in the Artist Academy Facebook group and I'm seeing all of the other artists that are doing it and if they can do it then I can do it <laughs> because I know that if I put in the effort, something good will happen. And I just saying that in the back of your head, just like, just take my word for it. Something good will happen. And actually, don't just take my word for it. Ask Tiffany. So I will link Tiffany's Instagram here so you can follow along with hers. But Tiffany is a local artist here. I've kind of taken under my wing here the last year. She's so great. And she's in the Artist Academy. And I was, we were on a virtual meetup within the Academy the other day, a virtual meetup is a call that we do every other week for Academy members to come on and ask questions. And we talk about art and sometimes we just talk about life. We talked about Christmas movies the other day. And anyway, we were on there and I was asking everybody what they were going to do for the challenge. And Tiffany was a really great testimonial out of the blue. She goes, last year was my first year doing this. And it really just catapulted her art career from the start of the year, as in it created consistency for her to paint every day, which is the toughest part, right? <laughs> and she ended up creating 31 paintings that she then grouped together for her own art show slash art auction. And she auctioned all of them off together at the end of this. So great idea. Instead of selling them one by one every day, you could save them and announce with every post that you're posting every day with every painting that they're all going to be auctioned off at the end. So everybody pick their favorites, be ready to bid in the auction. And I've done art auctions before great way to sell things because it's, first off, it's really hard to price your paintings, right? Especially in the beginning. And so having 
a starting bid and then having people bid on them up and up, it helps. And it just, it also creates competition. Like I can't say enough good things about an art auction. That's what Tiffany did. She sold a lot of them. I actually bought one of them. I have one hanging in my art studio and she highly, highly recommended it. And what she's doing this year, just to give you another idea, shout out to Tiffany for all of this. (laughs) And she's doing 31 pet portraits in 31 days, which I think is a gold idea because everybody loves their pets. And I think as soon as she gets this started, she's going to be just completely booked out for the whole 31 days. She's already taking pre-orders for it right now. And she already, as of today of the recording, has 10 people signed up for $100 a pop. I think it takes her about an hour or two to create. They're not super, super detailed, but they're fun. They're colorful. And people know what they're getting based on some previous paintings that she's done of pet portraits for people. And so she has examples to show key point of this. That is a key thing. If you're taking pre-orders, you have to have examples to show. Don't just make a post with words only saying, hey, I'm thinking about creating murals or whatnot, blah, blah, blah. Send me your orders. No, create an example now saying this is what you will get. And if you're wanting to go down the same road as this, whether it be with different commissions or pet portraits or whatnot, creating an example is key. So she's doing that right. And I think as the challenge starts, I think in the first week, she's going to be booked out for the entire 31 days. If I was a betting person, (laughs) I would say, because this is a a brilliant idea. So if you're not sure what to do, taking pre-orders for the first 31 days, $100 a pop, making it affordable for everyone. I think this is a great idea. Take her idea. (laughs) And there's so many other testimonials inside of the Artist Academy. If you want to go in and see, I'm going to make a post here this week. So it will be up by the time this episode airs of benefits of what people have done in the past and you know how it's affected their art business. There's so many. Go in the Artist Academy Facebook group. I will pin that to the top and you can read through some of the testimonials of people who have done it in the last four years. This is the fifth year doing it. I don't know what I'm going to be doing. I don't know. I recently have seen a couple ideas on Pinterest that I want to try out. So I might do the first week just trying new things because I just like to keep it interesting with trying new things. So, And also, I'm not sure how much time I'm going to have every day. And I think it might vary. So there's that. Also, last year, I just want to say, you can make up your own rules to this. You can post one every single day, or you can just make sure you have 31 completed by the end. Years past, I posted every single day consistently. Last year, got a little lazy with it. And the last day I was short, like five paintings or five sketches, and I did five in one day and posted it. (laughs) So do with this as you want. Set yourself up for success, however you know yourself. But as an art business coach, I want to encourage you to look at it through a combination of a profitability standpoint and a creative standpoint. Because the best results will come from an idea that taps into both of those. And what I mean by that is choose something that lights you up when you create it, an idea that's enticing to you, but also an idea that's enticing to either a niche group or the general public because you want people to buy it, right? So maybe tapping into what you've done in the past, your best painting that you've ever done, just recreate it. Or a style that you've always wanted to try that you are pretty sure is going to sell. Or something that you can take pre-orders for. It's just something that you can set at a correct price. A price that either starts low, say the first week you're selling something for 50 bucks. Second week you can sell it for 100 bucks, and then it goes up to 150, and then it goes up to 200. I don't know. You can make your own rules, <laughs> or it's a set price the whole time. Just something where you're experimenting with finding your ideal buyer and putting it something out that goes to their level while also having fun with it and all of it, right? Easier said than done. (laughs) How do you know to do this? Well, you don't. I don't. But this whole challenge is about experimenting to find that happy medium of art that you like to create and something that people want to buy. Because once you find that, 
that will easily create momentum in your art business. And that momentum is key to making the high profits this year. Because once you've made a sale, that one sale, you're like, okay, I'm going to get another one. And then once you get another one, it just it stacks on top of each other to that go just one after another. And you go from selling paintings for this amount, and then you go a little bit higher and a little bit higher. And that momentum goes up and up because you're filling your bank accounts and you're filling your creativity. And it's just, it's got to start somewhere. But getting that momentum going is the tough part. Because like I mentioned, people come in the Artist Academy and they they look at the content and they don't do stuff and then but cuz they need that momentum to get started in for themselves and once it gets going it really gets going i don't know there's some kind of science behind it i guess it's like a ball in motion stays in motion kind of a thing it's I, that's just how it works i swear if you're busy you're posting and with you're posting on social media you're getting more business and, and then you're getting more from that and it's just it's got to start somewhere and let it start this january with this challenge and let's figure out how to make money during this 2023 profitable year oh, i'm so excited Also, lean on the Artist Academy. I was searching the statistics with accountability groups, and I'm going to quote this website that I found that seems pretty reliable. (laughs) It's a research studies display that publicly committing your goals to someone gives you a 65% chance of completing them. So putting out that you're doing this challenge on social media, shouting it out, which I suggest we all do right now. It shows people what's coming and it just gets some accountability going on public. So that, it gives you a 65% chance of completing them at least. However, having a specific accountability partner increases that success rate to 95%. So as much as you feel like you'd rather continue on your journey alone, which we all do, hanging out in our studios by ourselves, it's beneficial to have an accountability partner around. And you can have that with the Artist Academy. Find somebody. Find somebody specific or just use the group in total. Some people are posting in the morning. Some people are morning people. I am an all day, all night person right now. (laughs) I am usually a night person, so I would carve away some time during the night. But let me tell you, logging onto Facebook and being in the Artist Academy Facebook group and seeing people at 7, 8 a.m. already having posted, especially our members who are in Europe, (laughs) who the timing is way ahead in their favor. And so seeing that they've already created, I'm like, okay. I've got to get mine in too because what's her face is getting hers in and if she can do it, I can do it. And it just, it creates accountability and it also just, it creates inspiration as well. Knowing that you're not in it alone really helps. Buy the supplies, get your stuff set up, (laughs) prepare. I'll be using the hashtag 31 day challenge and also hashtag artist academy. If you want to use those, you can go to those hashtags to see what everybody else is doing as well as in the Facebook group. And yeah, I'm excited to see what you create. Okay, I've got to go feed a baby. My boobs are about to start leaking anytime now. So I got to go. But if you have an idea and maybe you need some help processing through it, post it in the Artist Academy and we can help work you through it. And yeah, I'm excited to see what you're creating. Also, I would also suggest shoot for like, a medium effort in here. I wouldn't shoot for the stars to create a whole big painting every day. And I wouldn't go just the bare minimum. Shoot for medium effort. I think that's the key here is just pushing yourself just a little bit because carving away time every single day is a lot. But just know that not everybody who starts this is going to complete it. But if you can be that person who completes this 31 day challenge it's going to set you up for the year and you're just, there's so many great things. Okay. I got to go. (laughs) Okay. I got to go feed a baby. All right. I'll see you next week.